Hello everyone and welcome to this Channel Talent Headliner on the Mathematics of Stopping a Self-Driving Car. My name is Dr Robert Whittaker and I'm a lecturer at the University of East Anglia in Norwich. And for those of you who don't know, this is a campus university located on the edge of Norwich in the east of England. And here's a picture of our beautiful campus. My job as a lecturer in mathematics involves a mix of teaching undergraduate students who are studying mathematics degrees, doing my own mathematical research, and also various administrative tasks to help keep the university running. So the problem I'm going to talk to you about in this channel talent session is a problem that was brought to us by a major vehicle manufacturer who is interested in producing self-driving systems for cars in the future. In the video today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the problem that was brought to us and how we adapted and refined that to come up with something uh, that was a mathematical problem that we could then solve using mathematics. And in the live session, I'm going to go on um, to take that problem and then show how we can use various mathematical techniques to come up with a solution and then think about that solution and maybe refine our original mathematical problem to make it more realistic. And this overall process of taking a real world problem, uh, producing a mathematical model of it, and then solving that, and then maybe refining it, is known as mathematical modelling. And it's something that I do quite a lot in my own mathematical research. So I take real world problems, try and describe them using various mathematical equations, and then come up with solutions to those equations that can help tell us what's going on in the real world. Okay, so what was the problem that was brought to us? Well, it was a problem involving self-driving cars. And what do you do when the self-driving car system realises that it needs to stop at a certain point on the road? And the problem as it was brought to us was roughly as follows. So a self-driving car detects that it needs to stop at a certain point on the road ahead. What's the best manner in which to stop the car? And as mathematicians, we sort of read that problem and we weren't entirely sure what it meant. Um, so what do they mean by the best manner? Um, what do we know about what the car is doing and where it needs to stop? That sort of thing. So we went back to the, the vehicle manufacturer and we had a chat with them to see if we could understand better what it is they actually wanted to know. And after those conversations, we came up with a, a more refined, more focused problem that uh, more accurately described exactly what we knew and what we wanted to find out. So that more focused problem is as follows. So given a car's initial speed and acceleration and the distance to the required stopping point, what is the best velocity profile for the car to adopt in order to minimise the discomfort for the passengers? So in this more focused problem, you can see we're told a little bit more specifically what it is that we know. So we know the initial speed and acceleration of the car and we know the distance to the stopping point. What it is we're trying to find, so we want to, to give a velocity profile and what it is we want that solution to do. So we want it to minimise the discomfort to the passengers. So we now have a, a more precise sort of problem to work with uh, and try and describe mathematically. But before we do that, let's take a little, little sidestep and have a look at some of the maths that we might need to, to use in order to address this problem. So first of all, we'll need something known as kinematics. And you've probably seen some of this already, either in your, your mechanics work in A-level maths or maybe in, in physics either at A-level or at GCSE. So given a, a velocity profile, because that seems to be what we're interested in, can we uh, take that velocity profile and from it calculate other things that might be of interest to us? So for instance, the, the distance travelled by something travelling with a given velocity profile can be written down as the integral of that velocity profile with respect to time. So uh, distance s of t is equal to the integral from naught to t of v of t. Uh, similarly, we might be interested in the acceleration, and you may know that acceleration is just the time derivative of the velocity. So a is dv by dt, uh, which is sometimes written as v primed of t uh, as a shorthand notation. And it turns out there's another quantity that we'll be interested in uh, in this work, and that's known as the jerk. And the jerk is defined as the rate of change of acceleration with respect to time. So we start off with the velocity. If we do one derivative, we get acceleration. If we do another derivative, we will get something known as the jerk. And it's called the jerk because it's sort of what you experience when the acceleration changes. So if you're in a car driving straight and you suddenly turn to go around a corner, there's some acceleration and you kind of get jerked outwards. 
um, rather than turning with the car. If you're in a car and it's stationary and you suddenly put your foot down on the acceleration, you sort of feel being thrown back in your, in your seat as the car accelerates. And it's that change in acceleration um, that you sort of feel uh, as a sort of jerkiness. So that's the jerk, uh, which will also be important in the work that we're going to do here. Okay, so that was kinematics. Um, there's some other bits of mathematics that we'll also need. So there's a useful technique known as non-dimensionalization. And this is a way of sort of scaling out um, various parameters from a problem. Um, so we've got fewer parameters to work with. Um, so for instance, suppose we're measuring distances in meters. We've then got a distance uh, that the car is going to travel before it has to stop. So the distance from the car to a red traffic light, for example. Um, and we could, we could measure that distance in meters and then we have a number of meters to the, to the stopping point. Uh, but rather than measuring distance in meters, we could measure distance in multiples of that initial distance. So we could define the distance from the initial position of the car to the traffic light as being one unit of distance. And then, for instance, when the car is halfway there, there'll be 0.5 units of distance to go. And by making this choice for how we measure distance, uh, we reduce the number of parameters because we've no longer got a, a distance to the stopping point appearing explicitly in the problem. So this non-dimensionalization is, is a useful technique that we'll see being used in the live session. We're also going to need some um, results from uh, a subject known as optimization. And it turns out that there's a, a very well studied class of mathematical problems where you're asked to minimize the integral of something, um, where the, the something depends on some function that you're trying to find. So in this case, we're trying to find a velocity profile which we might write down as V of T. Um, and we want to minimize the discomfort. So if we could write the discomfort as an integral over some function of our velocity profile, um, then that gives us a problem that's in a form where we know how to get the solution. So this isn't a bit of maths that you'll have studied yet, but it's one that you may well meet if you come and do a maths degree. Uh, but the nice thing is that having got a problem in this form, we can follow a set of mathematical rules that tells us how to get a solution. And I'll explain uh, how that works in the live session if we need it. And finally, something that I think you will have seen is simultaneous equations. So you will probably seen that the case where you've got two equations with two unknown variables in them, and you have to solve them simultaneously in order to find the, the solution for the two variables. And these sorts of problems can be extended to, to more equations and more unknowns. And in general, if you have n independent linear equations with n unknown variables in them, you can solve them to find a unique solution for all n unknowns. OK, so back to the problem. Um, so the problem that we had was given a car's initial speed and acceleration and the distance to the required stopping point, what is the best, best velocity profile to adopt in order to minimize the discomfort of the passengers? So we're thinking about a situation where we've got a car and there's a red traffic light on the road ahead. Um, how should the car slow down and stop as it approaches the traffic lights? So clearly what we don't want to do is carry on going at sort of the, the current speed until we get almost at the traffic lights and then jam on the brakes and screech to a halt. The passengers aren't going to like that. Uh, we want some better stopping profile. Equally, we don't want to sort of slow down almost to a halt and then sort of inch forwards uh, very slowly to the traffic light, that's not going to be very popular either. We want to get there in a reasonable time um, and slow down nice and smoothly so the passengers don't get thrown around in the car too much. Okay, so that's the problem. Uh, we now need to try and translate this into something more mathematical. So write it in terms of equations, maybe introduce an optimization problem with an integral in like we saw on the previous slide. So let's think about what the, what the problem says, what things we know, what things we might be trying to find out and try and translate that into something more mathematical. So we're told um, that we sort of know the initial speed, the initial acceleration and the distance. So let's give those some mathematical symbols. Um, so let's call the initial speed V naught, the initial acceleration A naught and the stopping distance D. Um, we are going to assume that the car and the self-driving system has complete control over the velocity profile. Um, so we can sort of mathematically come up with what we think the best profile is and then tell the car to follow that. Um, so we'll give that um, some, some mathematical notation. 
and we'll say we're trying to find some function v of t. So v is the velocity and we want it to be a function of time. So as time goes on, we're going to specify what the velocity of the car should be at each point in time. Uh, we want to minimise the discomfort to the passengers, and this is probably the least obvious bit. How do we describe the discomfort? And this is something that we're going to have to think about and come up with a model for. And what we'd like to do, because we're trying to find um, the best velocity profile, we want to be able to model the discomfort in terms of the velocity. So we want some function of the velocity that then tells us what the, what the discomfort would be. So if I could give you a, a given velocity profile, you will be able to calculate the discomfort from that. So that's something we've still got to do. Uh, and finally, let's think about the things we're not going to worry about at the moment. So to start with, we're not going to worry about uh, there being any limits on the acceleration and deceleration of the car. So we're not worried about how powerful it is or how good the brakes are. We'll just assume that whatever velocity profile we say we need, uh, the car will be able to achieve that. Also, we won't uh, bother about any speed limits. So if, if we say that the car needs to speed up for some reason, we won't worry about there being a maximum on that, that value either. And these are the sorts of assumptions that, that we can make at the beginning to, to help simplify things. But we may need to go back and review at the end um, to see whether they're reasonable or not and whether we need to, to put something in uh, instead of just making that assumption. OK, so that's a little way forwards. Um, we can now take uh, some of that mathematical notation and rephrase the problem in a slightly more mathematical way. So we're looking for a velocity profile, which is a function v of t. And I'm also going to say that we're going to be looking for a stopping time capital T. So that's the length of time it's going to take the car to get from its current position um, to the point where it's stopped. And because we're looking for a function v of t, it's useful to know what range of t we're going to be looking at. So that's why I'm going to introduce this stopping time t. And then we want to find this velocity profile such that a number of conditions apply. First one of those is that the discomfort is minimised. And we still haven't said what the discomfort is. Um, that's something that we're going to have to work out. Uh, and then there's going to be some conditions on the velocity profile to make sure that the, the car sort of satisfies the constraints of the real world problem. So, for example, point two, we want the initial speed of the car to be V0, the initial acceleration to be A0. So that's sort of setting the initial conditions on the velocity profile V of T. We also want to make sure that the car comes to, to a stop um, smoothly after the time capital T. And at that time, we want it to have travelled a distance d along the road, so it comes to a stop at the right point. So that's a sort of more mathematical version of the problem, but there's still lots of words. And I'd like to translate um, all these different constraints into equations. And then I can hopefully deal with them mathematically. So let's have a go at, at doing some of those now. So first of all, let's rephrase the, the first line slightly. Uh, let's say, first of all, we want to find a constant capital T, and that's going to be the stopping time, and a function V of T for little t lying between 0 and capital T. So we're just being a little bit more precise about the function V of T that we're trying to find. Uh, it's going to span this range of time going between t equals naught and t equals capital T. And then we need to translate each of the five um, constraints into something more mathematical. So for the first one, we need to define the discomfort somehow. And I'm not going to specify that at the moment. I'm going to leave that for something, uh, something for you to think about. But what I'd like to do is to write it as an integral. And that's so that I can use some of these optimization techniques that I mentioned earlier. So the idea would be to come up with some expression in terms of the velocity profile for what the discomfort is at each time t. And then I'm going to integrate, which is a bit like adding up, all those little bits of discomfort at every time to give me a total discomfort. So I'm going to say that the, the total discomfort, capital D, is equal to some integral from naught to capital T of some function of the velocity profile. And um, you'll still need to specify what that is, um, but we'll see that later. Uh, for point two, um, I want the initial speed to be V naught. Uh, my velocity profile is V of T. Uh, so the initial time, t equals zero, I want that to be equal to v naught. So I write that condition as v of naught, so that's v with t equals zero, needs to be equal to v naught. And then in a similar way, I can go on and write the remaining conditions um, in terms of the profile v of t. 
And I'm going to leave that for you to have a think about uh, between now and the live interactive session. So the next steps for you, um, I'd like you to have a think about how you could complete um, this mathematical statement of the problem. So first of all, can you think about how you might model the discomfort D in terms of our velocity profile? So you need some function to go inside that integral that depends on the velocity, uh, maybe the derivative of the velocity, maybe the second derivative of the velocity, or anything else that you might think is relevant. So see if you can come up with some expression for a function to go inside that integral, which would be a reasonable model um, for the discomfort experienced by passengers in the car when it's following some velocity profile. Uh, then you could also think about how to complete the, the mathematical statement of the problem by filling in mathematical versions of the other conditions 3, 4 and 5. So have a look at the velocity profile, see what the condition is saying and see if you can translate that condition into some mathematical statement and equation involving the velocity profile V of t. You might also like to have a think about some of the other mathematics that we'll need when we're solving the problem, as I mentioned earlier. So non-dimensionalization, solving simultaneous equation, and kinematics and velocity time graphs. So if you've seen those before, you might want to refresh your memory. If you haven't, um, then maybe it might be, might be fun to look them up, say on Wikipedia or something, and see if you can find out a little bit more before the live session. And finally, um, please come along to the, the live interactive session that follows on from this video. Uh, in that session, I will show you the full problem that we came up with. Uh, and then take you through the various steps we did in solving that problem uh, and then thinking about some refinements um, because the solution wasn't quite what we were expecting. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and hopefully I'll see many of you again in the live session. Bye for now. <laughs>